have developed that I'm going to demonstrate for you today is a plug and play Power BI sales dashboard that will connect to your SAP data. And it's kind of an out of the box solution that, um, that we've prepared to be able to offer um, with minimal like implementation time, like maybe three days implementation. Um, and the benefits of that in terms of uh, all the beauty of Power BI and all the data visualizations. So I wanna show you that. Uh, I think the best way to demonstrate any of these reporting is to actually see it in a live demo. So, um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna hop onto the demonstration and show you, and then I'll, I'll talk to what it is and what we've done and what's available. And um, yeah, and then after that, if we've got any questions. Um, sorry, I'm just not sure that I've shared the correct screen. Ketan, can, can you just confirm? I, yes. yes, I can see the Power BI, yes. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that. Um, just needed to double check. All right, so what we've got here is um, very similar to what Ketan's been showing in terms of obviously um, a lot of the sales analysis of sales invoices, customers, items, sales orders, delivery notes, um, and invoices is the underlying data set that we've loaded in this model. Um, what the benefit is of Power BI is really that access, automatic access to the data and you can update the data and set that on regular timeframe updates. Um, but, you know, the beauty is the advanced analytics and the interactivity. So, and also the time intelligence works really well in Power BI in terms of being able to filter for year to date, this year, last year, etc. It just makes building the reports a lot easier. And what we've kind of packaged here is we've set one up with some demo um, slides or pages with different aspects of visual visualizations, which I will run through. Um, but it's really, we've connected that data model in the background. So some of those things Ketan was just showing about um, filtering by item groups or, you know, customer groups, etc. All of that's already preloaded into the back end of this data model that sits um, in Power BI and that's where we've joined up all the data. So really, um, you know, if you're interested in this, then you can kind of take this and then leverage off it based on the existing skills that you have. And we understand that some people are probably already on the Power, Power BI journey or maybe, you know, advanced in Power BI or haven't even started with Power BI yet. So you know, we're, we're kind of available to help with all of your, you know, all of your Power BI questions and reporting. And, but also we wanna be able to show you something that you could just start with if you haven't already jumped on the Power BI train, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's great and it's fabulous. And, you know, I can't talk highly enough about it. So I think, you know, rather than me talking, we've only got a limited time time frame today, unfortunately. So I think I'm just gonna quickly do a bit of a quick demo. So the sales dashboard here, if you haven't seen Power BI before, what it does really well is this interactivity. So this has got some headline call out cards regarding sales year to date versus last year. It's color coded with conditional formatting. So this red immediately is visually telling us that we're behind last year to date. Um, we've got, you know, GP, we've got this month, we've got some call out cards over here with regards to open orders, open delivery notes. Um, you can have this same analysis, obviously, for the procurement and purchasing side, but for this one here, we've just focused on sales. A couple of, you know, analysis tables with this conditional formatting and highlighting with regards to top five customers and items. Um, but say, for example, here, if you're interested in what's going on in New South Wales, then if I select New South Wales, then all the other visuals on the page kind of update. You know, if we've got a blank there, it means they don't have any open sales orders. But it's the interactivity in Power BI that can make the analysis, um, you know, so much more intuitive and just dynamic in terms of being able to really interrogate the data and understand patterns and trends. So that's a dashboard page there. We've got an alternative view because some people, you know, some people don't or prefer the tree visuals. Some people prefer line graphs and charts. Once you have this pack, it's really easy once you've got a visual and once you've got the data and what you call the DAX or the formulas, which is things like the count, the sales and the, you know, percentages, et cetera. Um, it's a lot easier to, you know, leverage an existing page and then just kind of redesign it. So, you know, don't get too concerned if you don't like line charts or if you don't like trees, if you prefer donuts or pies or whatever your preference is for visualizations, you know, 
Power BI is extremely customizable in terms of making things visually look the way that you want them to look. If you've got a, a color scheme for your business, you can drop in your logo, you can update the color scheme, all of those sorts of things. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but you know, the, the possibilities are endless. So that's just some alternative views. Um, this is a, an analysis by sales rep page. So in this demo data, you know, we've only got that many sales reps, but we can do an analysis year on year. Um, I haven't got budget data loaded into this sample data, but it's important to note that if you have your budget data in, in something like an Excel SharePoint file or um, another database or something, then the beauty of Power BI is you can, you can leverage and bring in um, all sorts of different various data sets. So you can have this data model, which has got your SAP, which is automatically updating, but you can also have um, Excel that updates, I don't know, overnight, or you can have that on a more regular update schedule if that's where you load your budgets or your sales targets or your monthly targets. You can bring in your website traffic or Google Analytics data. You can bring in CRM, Salesforce. So yeah, it really is endless. So you can have, so whilst we saw some of the reports from Ketten that you can build in Crystal or, or Web Client, um, that's I think just SAP data. The beauty here is that you can combine various data sets on top of your SAP data if you want to. And specifically, I see that a lot with a lot of my clients where they might have the underlying ERP um, is where the actuals are coming from, but their budgets are coming from an Excel template. That's fine, you can combine all that and bring all that in and do the comparison and analysis here in Power BI. So just so I'm highlighting here sales versus last year, but you, obviously you can also have the budget as well. And yeah, and then, then visually here, again, with the conditional formatting and the data bars, you can, you know, you can analyse and visually see exactly what's happening in terms of best performers, etc. But then you can also like drill down. So here, if we just want to focus on gym, you know, gym selling predominantly these item groups, we can drill down a layer to see exactly what the items are. Or if we wanted to, we could drill down on the hierarchy to see that roll up by item group and see the total by group. Um, over here, similarly for customers, we can see that Jim here is selling to these customers. And you know, sometimes it can do the shading when you're using these charts and you can, go, you can get a bit lost. So every visual here has got this little filter icon and you can just hover over it and see um, exactly what's happening on that particular visual. So I've got a filter on this page, so it's just this current financial year. Um, and that there's nothing in the future. And then if you, you know, if you want to drill down again over here, if we just want to interrogate on this, we can drill down to the next level. You can see I've kind of got multiple things going on now. So you can get a bit, you know, you can go down the rabbit hole a bit in Power BI. So the way I design my dashboards is the logo is always like a reset button. So if you click the logo there, it's just cleared all the filters back to the way they were. Um, you can also use a reset button here to clear every single page. Um, but just really quickly, and you know, I don't have a lot of time today, but this is just to give you a very high level level overview to see what's possible with, with SAP coming into Power BI. So this, I think um, Ketten had an example there of maybe some top three clients or something. This one here is top items, top customers, and it's dynamic. So I've just got this slicer over here. So you, you, know, you, you might want to look at the top 20, it can get a bit busy. So you just want to focus on the top five. In Power BI, if you're not aware, you can always export um, a particular visual into like a focus mode, just so you know, so you can interrogate that a little bit more. Um, or you could have a whole page with just that if you want. I mean, you can customize it any way you want, which is great. I've introduced some ranking logic here. And as you can see with the conditional formatting, we can see the ranking movement on last year. This is just based on sales, but you could have it based on margin, percentage or margin. Um, you know, whichever way you want to slice and dice your data, it's all available in the underlying model. Um, so yeah, so visually here we can just see, say for the top five customers that, um, oh, sorry, items rather, this one here, that's the same, whereas, um, you know, this one here was obviously number one last year, we've got the rank over there. So this one's dropped, which plays obviously with the negative percentage variance. So it's just another way visually, I think, to be able to analyse and to be able to understand exactly what is happening um, for a combination here. So this is items, we can see who's buying them, what the customers are. Same page with the customer lens, top customers, you can see the top customers, ranking versus last year, and then an analysis of those customers and what they're buying. Again, it works interactively. So if I, if I choose that customer, then this over here is now filtered for just that customer. 
So um, the top 10 trends, so this is kind of like if you've got quite a lot of history data in your system and you want to analyse trends over a number of years, um, you can kind of see which customers are moving up and down and which items are moving up and down, what the trend is and their ranking over you know, X amount of years that you've got in your data set. And this one here is a bit busy with all the data, but if I just want to focus on one particular item, then you can see that item's customer trends over whatever the data is in your data set. We could filter that for this year or last year, et cetera. And then I can see here, I've just put a note in that again, we can drill down, you know, you can drill down on these and right click and drill through and see details. Um, open sales orders. So it's pretty explanatory. This data set seems to have quite a lot open because it's a demo data. Hopefully you won't have that many open, but you know, it, it will, you can drill down and you can see it by, by individual date. Um, again, with the cross filtering, we can see this customer, how many have they got past you? This is some details here. Um, it's got a summary by sales rep to see who's got overdue, open orders, past due, what's coming up, future orders by due date. Um, so this one here, this, the focus on this page is open sales orders, both future and past due. Um, similarly, this is like open documents. So say for example, if you also had your AP data in here, you could have your, up here you could have your AR documents, your AP documents. Um, oh sorry, that's count, that's, that's value. But so here you can see where the highest value is, it cross filters. Um, or you could just look at a particular customer and look at that particular customer's open, you know, you could look at a particular item. So I think the beauty of Power BI versus some of the um, legacy more static reports is just that interactivity and how dynamic it can be based on all the fil various filters um, that you can apply at various different levels of the data to really analyse that data on the fly. This one here is a monthly analysis, which is just a trend over time you know, by customer, by item, by sales rep. And I didn't show you, I don't think I meant to show you back here on the dashboard. So say for example, if we wanted to know more about this PC sales year to date, um, actually you used to right click, now you can just hover over it and it'll pop up and then you can drill through. So we can drill through that $20,000 for the PCs and see, oh, apologies, I put that filter on, it didn't take it off. There we go. See our twenty thousand dollars, and see all the individual line transactions, all the additional details, any journal entries, the status, the sales rep, all of the underlying data is there available. Um, that I've just dropped into that visual, but basically all of the master data for items, customers, and AR is available within this report. And you know, the, just a summary here of the you know the mapping of the item groups, the customers. You can do a count by state. You can do a count by sales rep. All of that information is available, and, and it's sitting in this model um, that we've kind of got prepared, ready to go out of the box.